What's up you guys, Rex here. Medical school in the United States can cost about $280,000 for four years of public school and $370,000 for private school. So how on earth do almost 30% of medical students graduate debt free? So this video is specifically about MD students because I could find very good sources from the AAMC in particular, which are all linked down below that explain why 29.2% of medical students in 2020 graduated with zero student loans according to the AAMC. So in this video, I'll try to break down starting from the least percentage to the most percentage of how I think probably students are able to do this. So the least percentage is people that just have personal savings over like $400,000 and they can just cash flow it. I'm gonna guess this is about half a percent of students at most. And so why do I think this is even possible? Well, 15% of matriculating medical students are over 26 years old and 5.4% are over 28. And so I do know of people that had a major change in career that they were a lawyer for like three years, doing great successful career and switched into medicine. And those people may have had a very successful career where they were to save up a ton of money and are able to pay their way through medical school. In addition, there might be some people that started a huge tech company while they were an undergrad and made a ton of money and are able to pay for it or they somehow are launching a tech company while in medical school and able to pay it all while they're in medical school from working a job this is a very 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 small percentage half a percent is probably pretty generous next i'll estimate that like another one percent of students are able to graduate debt-free because of some like merit full ride that they get. And so these are pretty uncommon, but they do exist. And so the most famous one is probably the David Geffen Scholarship at UCLA. That is a full ride scholarship given out to just like four students or something like that per year. But UPenn has more scholarships that they give out like 25, they're full tuition, not quite full ride. But these scholarships do exist. They also exist from some like outside organizations potentially. And so maybe 1% is also pretty generous here, but there are people that do just get like a full ride scholarship to medical school and that's how they graduate debt free. I'll toss in another 1% of students who maybe are able to pay their way through medical school debt-free because they are married to someone who is able to pay for their journey through medical school. Now, about 6.9% of medical students that entered into medical school in 2020 were married when they entered. And so this 1%, again, probably pretty generous that the spouse would have to have a really high paying job to be able to pay their way through. The spouse might be significantly older such that they've had more time to save money. Could be all kinds of situations, but I'll throw in maybe another 1% of people graduating from medical school are able to do it debt-free because their spouse is able to help them out tremendously. Now let's get into some slightly more significant percentages. In 2020, 701 of the matriculating students were actually matriculating as MD, PhD students. That makes up about three and a half percent of MD students. Now it's not every single one of these students that would be getting a like MSTP funded spot where they would get a full tuition scholarship plus a stipend for living expenses. But for the sake of this video, I'll assume all 701 of those are fully funded programs. Not totally true, but the vast majority of MD PhD students going to medical school are doing that and receiving their medical school tuition as part of them being in a program that is hopefully training physician scientists and physician educators, which provide a great service to the body of research in medicine and the country as a whole. So shout out to all of our MD PhD students and all of my MD PhD classmates. You're my hero. You're very impressive doing a lot of cool stuff. Anyway, another group of heroes I could find that about 4%, that was the best to an actual number. This number isn't super public, but about 4% of students in medical school are matriculating as part of the Health Profession Scholarship Program, which is the scholarship program for joining the armed services as a doctor after medical school. So you get all of your medical school paid for, plus a stipend for living expenses in exchange for military service to the United States through like the Air Force, Navy, or Army. So these people, also my hero, represents about 4% of people from my best research that are also going to be graduating debt-free from medical school. So everything I've talked about so far brings us to about 10%. We still have another about 20% to go to get to that 29.3%. So where are these coming from? Well, you probably guessed it, but the parents is a huge category. I'm gonna guess about 10% of people just get their education straight up paid for by their parents, which 
is a ton of money. Being able to spend like $90,000 a year on a child's education is incredibly generous and probably out of reach, unfortunately, for the vast majority of Americans. But there is a huge bias in people going to medical school that they often are coming from very high income backgrounds. About 25.3% of matriculating students in 2020 reported coming from a family with a household income of over $250,000. So I think it's reasonable to assume that of that 25%, who are making over $25,000, about half of them are going to have saved enough money to just pay for their students' education out of their own generosity, and that's something they want to do. This is probably particularly true for the 7.7% .7 of matriculating students who come from families with a household income over $500,000. And so people making over $500,000 probably have $100,000 to spare to be very generous towards their children. And so that is a very real percentage of people who are graduating debt-free is because their parents are helping them pay for it. Now, the last 10%, I would estimate, is probably some combination of the above, plus need-based aid. That need-based aid at a lot of top schools especially can be very significant. And 13.9% of matriculating students reported coming from a family with a household income under $50,000. And at certain medical schools, if your family comes from a low income, you would get a huge chunk of the cost of attendance in need-based aid. And then these students might have a little bit of scholarship thrown in there, and then they would be able to graduate debt-free. It also could be that some student gets a good amount of scholarship, and then they also have very generous parents who are maybe some other percentage of that 25% making over $250,000 who are able to spare a lot of money to be generous and help their students, but it's also the students maybe getting $20,000 of scholarships a year from outside scholarships, or $20,000 from this scholarship and $30,000 from another scholarship. Who knows? But combining them together, they're able to graduate debt-free. Or it could be some combination of all of the above, that they maybe went to medical school a little bit later, so they were able to save up like $100,000 to pay for medical school, plus they got married and their spouse has like $50,000 set aside. Maybe they get a little bit of scholarship here, maybe another $20,000 in scholarship, and their parents are also generous and able to contribute another $30,000. That's like $200,000 right there. And then maybe they get a little bit of financial aid on top of that, and then they're also able to graduate debt-free. So it could be a combination of all of the above. It could just be generous parents. It's only a very small minority that are getting that like full ride scholarship just for merit, such as the UCLA scholarship. But it's some combination of all of the above in the vast majority of cases. So those are all of the main ways I imagine that 29.3% of medical students graduate debt free. The biggest chunk probably has to do with a combination of factors or from their parents' generosity and that they were lucky to just be born into a family with very financially successful parents who are able to pay for their students' education. So if I had to give advice on how to graduate medical school debt-free, biggest advice would be be born into a wealthy family, but that's not something we exactly have control over. I wouldn't say to just do an MD PhD program because you want to graduate debt free. I don't think that is a valid reason to apply MD PhD. I think you should have a passion about research and want to be a physician scientist or want to be an educator if you're going into that program. Similarly, I think that you should want to really serve your country if you want to go into one of the health profession scholarship programs. And getting a full ride to medical school for merit is sort of a crapshoot. So I would really say that there's no way to like really targeted, make sure, oh, I'm gonna graduate medical school debt-free. There is a lot of what circumstances you are born into that go into it, but I would recommend trying to go for a combination of all of them. Apply for scholarships where you can, make sure you are applying, and on top of all of your financial aid so that you can get as much need-based aid as possible, try to save money if you can. If you're married, encourage your spouse to be generous and save money. If you do have parents that are able to be generous, ask them to be generous and be very grateful for it that it's usually some combination of all of the above to graduate debt-free. That being said, I don't think graduating debt-free should be some like huge, massive goal, end-all, be-all. It is totally okay to have debt graduating from medical school. 70% of people do. And I would bet all of those 70%, 99% are gonna have no problem paying back those student loans. There are tons of options for paying back student loans, especially federal student loans that make it very easy and very flexible. And I'll be coming out with more videos in the future about why you shouldn't be stressed, even if you have to take out $400,000 of student loans to pay for medical school. You will still have a great life. Most importantly, you will get to be a physician. That's all that really matters. That is gonna give you the most life satisfaction. You will still have 
financial stability and worldly success and all that that is trivial compared to actually being a doctor. So don't stress if you are from a family where they aren't able to pay for your medical school, like perhaps 10% of people who are going to medical school do have that opportunity. Don't stress, it's okay to have student loans graduating from medical school. I think there is a big problem of student loans in America. I don't think that problem is medical students. Medical students will be able to pay that back and still have a great life. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. If you want to catch more of my videos talking about my life in medical school or finance related to medical school, make sure you subscribe to the notification bell. Check out the playlist on the right if you're applying to medical school for a lot of my advice. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, and until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Thank you.